For nearly a decade, Tesla repeated one of the boldest promises in modern technology. Fully self-driving cars were almost here. Elon Musk stated it again and again, in interviews, on earnings calls, at product events, and on social media. He said the breakthrough would arrive next year, then by the end of the year, then sometime in the second quarter, sometimes even in just a few months. The message was constant and confident. Many people came to believe that the key to total autonomy already existed inside their cars, waiting only for a software update to unlock it. But when ordinary drivers finally filmed what Tesla's latest self-driving systems could actually do on public roads, the reality looked very different from the promise. In one widely shared clip, a Tesla attempted a simple left turn and drifted into the wrong lane, forcing the driver to grab the wheel. In other recordings, cars accelerated far beyond posted speed limits, while autopilot was engaged, or hesitated awkwardly at intersections. The footage showed a system that seemed unsure, inconsistent, and sometimes unsafe. Experts who reviewed these videos reacted with concern rather than admiration. One researcher said that if she had to place these pilot tests on a scale from kindergarten through 12th grade, Tesla's system looked stuck around first or second grade. That comment might sound harsh, but it reflects a deeper problem. During the years when Tesla was still trying to make the technology work, the company sold early versions of it to hundreds of thousands of customers. It did so under bold names like Autopilot and Full Self Driving. These labels strongly suggested a car that could operate on its own, even if Tesla's fine print said otherwise. The branding helped transform Tesla from a rising car maker into one of the world's most valuable companies. Investors saw autonomy as the engine that would drive the company's future profits, but as more real-world data appeared, the growing gap between promise and performance became harder to ignore. That gap had consequences measured in more than just stock prices. Drivers using autopilot or full self-driving crashed into stationary fire trucks, parked police cars, concrete barriers, and other vehicles stopped on highways. Some crashes resulted in minor damage. Others were deadly. Federal investigators eventually linked hundreds of crashes and at least 14 deaths to Tesla's driver assistance systems. Their reports said Tesla's marketing and naming choices led people to overestimate what the cars could safely do. People treated the system like an almost finished self-driving product, when in reality, it was still an experimental driver assistance tool. To understand how Tesla ended up here, it helps to go back to the beginning. Before Tesla, electric cars had a dull reputation. They were slow, short range, and often unattractive. Many drivers saw them as sacrifices you made for the environment. Tesla changed that. Its first cars were sleek, fast, and packed with technology. They made electric vehicles look exciting. But for Elon Musk, building attractive electric cars was not enough. His larger vision was a global network of autonomous Teslas, driving themselves around cities, picking up passengers, and earning money for their owners. He said autonomy was the difference between Tesla being worth a lot and being worth almost nothing. There was one major obstacle. Tesla did not yet have the technology to make that vision real. So the company made a risky bet. While most competitors tested early autonomous systems in tightly controlled environments with professional safety drivers, Tesla did the opposite. It released unfinished versions of the technology directly to customers and asked those customers to supervise it. The company charged extra for access to these features and called them autopilot and later full self-driving. Even though Tesla insisted that drivers keep their hands on the wheel and eyes on the road, many people assumed the system was far more capable than it truly was. After all, why call something full self-driving if it still required constant supervision? At the same time, other companies were working on their own self-driving systems. Most used a mix of three main sensor types. Cameras provided detailed visual images. Radar detected objects far away in poor conditions. LiDAR built precise 3D maps of the surroundings. Together, these sensors created a world model that the car's software could use to make decisions. Tesla saw this multi-sensor approach and rejected it. Instead of using three kinds of sensors, the company chose to rely on one, cameras. This decision drew strong reactions from experts. 
Missy Cummings, a former fighter pilot and robotics professor, said Tesla's approach went against core ideas taught in robotics programs. She explained that computer vision systems can be very good, but they are not perfect. The best of them, she said, might reach around 97% accuracy. That sounds high until you remember what is at stake. Three out of 100 misread situations can be disastrous when they involve multi-ton vehicles moving at highway speeds. In aviation, a 3% failure rate would shut down an entire system. Cummings and others noted another key factor. Cost. Radar and LiDAR are expensive, and Tesla wanted to sell cars that ordinary people could afford. The company believed it could reach autonomy more cheaply, using only cameras and powerful software. Many engineers inside Tesla disagreed. They wanted to keep radar and use more modest names like Copilot instead of Autopilot. They warned that relying only on cameras would make the system fragile and easier to fool. Elon Musk overruled them. Some engineers resigned after the decision to remove radar was made. Once radar disappeared, new problems appeared quickly. Drivers across the United States began reporting phantom braking, where the car suddenly braked or slowed without any clear reason. Shadows on the road, overpasses, and reflective surfaces sometimes looked like obstacles to the camera system. Data showed that before Tesla removed radar, there were 34 official reports of phantom braking over 22 months. In the three months after radar was removed, that number jumped to more than 100 reports. To the drivers experiencing it, it felt as if their cars were getting jumpier and less predictable. A separate controversy focused on a video Tesla released in 2016 titled Full Self-Driving Hardware on All Teslas. The video appeared to show a Tesla driving itself from a house to the company's headquarters with no human input. Elon Musk pointed to that video as proof that every new Tesla already contained the hardware needed for full autonomy. But years later, in a wrongful death trial, Tesla's autopilot director testified under oath that the video had been staged. The route was pre-programmed and carefully mapped, and early attempts had ended with the car crashing into a fence. The video did not show what the system could do on its own under normal conditions. It showed what was possible with heavy preparation and editing. By December 2022, regulators in California decided to act. The state's Department of Motor Vehicles filed a case accusing Tesla of misleading advertising. The DMV argued that the names Autopilot and Full Self Driving suggested a level of autonomy the cars did not actually have. Tesla defended itself by saying its statements were marketing language protected by free speech. The company pointed to written warnings telling drivers to stay alert and keep their hands on the wheel. It later adjusted the branding to full self-driving, supervised, to emphasize that the driver was still responsible. For years, many lawsuits involving autopilot either failed or ended in quiet settlements. But that pattern began to shift. In Florida, a federal jury considered a case involving a fatal crash where autopilot was active. Jurors found Tesla partly responsible and ordered the company to pay more than $240 million. The judge wrote that a reasonable jury could decide Tesla had shown reckless disregard for human life in the way it developed and promoted its technology. The California DMV case, however, may carry even broader consequences. If Tesla loses, the company could face a temporary ban on selling and manufacturing cars in the state, even if only for 30 days. More importantly, a loss could create a legal finding that Tesla's self-driving claims were misleading. That would not just be a headline, it would become part of the legal record. Other states could use that decision as a model for their actions. Legal experts say a wave of similar cases could follow, brought by both government agencies and private plaintiffs. Even if Tesla wins the case, the victory would mainly preserve the status quo. Other regulators could still step in. Other juries could reach different conclusions. Tesla has built much of its identity and a large share of its stock market value on the dream of autonomy. Yet the technology remains unfinished, the crashes keep raising questions, and the legal pressure is growing. 
the company now stands at a turning point. Its future depends on whether it can finally make reality match its promises, or whether the gap between marketing and performance becomes too large for courts, regulators, and the public to accept. For now, Tesla's cars still rely on human drivers to step in when things go wrong. The systems can assist, but they are not chauffeurs, and they are not truly self-driving. That may change one day if the technology catches up. Until then, every new crash, every new lawsuit, and every new investigation adds another layer of scrutiny to a company that once promised to rewrite the rules of the road.